In this week's video, we get to see Georgina struggling to get through this big pile of mud, but that was a great day. Also, I do a little bit of beatboxing. We also get to see what I've been up to this week. And also, I am absolutely exhausted. I have a little bit of a hard time at the end of the week. I'm flat out done, like out, like exhausted, tired. But all in all, it's a really exciting week and nuclear races was fantastic. I've had the boys today, although I've had one boy, Charlie's been at school, and it's the evening now, so I've got someone coming round to the gym to do a personal training session, I'm going to swap into rescue fit stuff, go and prep the gym, prep the board with a workout, and then client will come round for 60 minutes. The garage slash studio pretty much stays tidy like this nowadays. Occasionally there's some stuff left out, but it's pretty much tidy floor space and then everything up on the walls and away. Whiteboard's here so I can do the workout, put stuff on the board and then occasionally someone will use permanent blue markers to do knots and crosses and that'll be on there forever maybe. Plan for the session will be, I set you up so you can kind of see what's going on. We're going to do a warm up run, so we're going to do a five minute run, then we're going to do big main session today. So we're going to do hangs, so body weight hangs and pull ups, and then we'll progress once we've done a load of sets of that into things like lap pull downs. So just really uh, post exhaust some of those muscles. Then we're going to do push ups and plank body weight stuff again, but then once we've exhausted that, we're going to post exhaust even more with some chest press. Then we're going to go to squats, body weight. Again, there's a theme here. And from that, we're going to progress to the trap bar and maybe some calf raises as well. And then for dessert, after our mains, battle ropes. And there we go. So just done an hour-ish session here in the gym with a client. We did a little warm-up run and then come into here and a little bit outside, we did pull-ups, push-ups and squats and we did some variations around them to work with the client's progression level where, where they are with that. Really good session, tidy up a little bit in here and then back into the house and tomorrow I might have a full rescue fit day so maybe I can get more done there. What is it? What is it? Do you blow? Do you... <sighs> Turns out that today I don't have a rescue fit slash office day. Georgie's got a assessment thing for work. So in that case, what I'll do is have another day with Ollie, clear up the house a little bit, try and get a little bit of stuff done when he's asleep, which will hopefully be about an hour and a half to two hours. And that's kind of it really. So not much of a business day. Hopefully we'll do some more tomorrow. When Ollie has gone to sleep, then I try and get a little bit done, but there's loads of housework to do and I'm pretty terrible at getting it done as well. So I've just done a rescue fit brief, which takes about half an hour. It's about a 10 minute film, five to 10 minute pre-research, research stuff beforehand. And then about 10, 15 minute afterwards to get all the links in and do a thumbnail and just make sure it's uploaded correctly. So that's half an hour gone. I've just got to go now and just do as much as I can before Georgie comes back from her thing so that the house isn't terrible and then we'll just see what time we've got left, what we've got planned. And they've gone out, results. So I've got a little bit of time to do some emails. Let's concentrate on rescue rangers and do some stuff with that. It is Friday today, isn't it, Ollie? Yeah. And 
it's a bit of an odd day. We're going to do some business stuff, some family stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Got a client in the gym at some point and need to run some stuff to someone, do some emails. We're going to do the daily brief, aren't we? Yeah. And tidy up the house. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Good boy. Are you doing cheese? Yeah. Right, yeah. Say, che say cheese then. Ready, go. I'm a paramedic with um, an ambulance service trust in the UK. And I've been there 10 years-ish. The next couple of months will be 10 years. And I went part-time about a year ago, a year and a half ago because there just was not enough time to get all the things done for Georgie to work, for the kids, childcare, um, and like uh, some other reasons as well. But even, even going part-time, there just doesn't seem to be enough time to get everything done. Like the business, the house, Georgie working, kids and childcare, family time, trying to enjoy yourself. You're kind of at, a, at an odds as to what to do. Like, there's just not enough time. There's just too much going on. I feel like I need to cut things out, but there is nothing that I can cut out. Drop some stuff off. Up the road, going back home, need to tidy up the house because it's an absolute mess. There's stuff all up the stairs, the dishwasher needs emptying, there's food everywhere. And that will give me a little bit of time after that to then maybe do a quick email or something briefly, get the gym sorted, and ready for a client to come in for the PT session. And then after that, have some proper lunch, chill out with some people that are coming round. And then later, try and get the brief done, the Resty Fit daily brief done just after lunch. And yeah, I don't know, a bit of time on the computer, Let's see what happens. And that's another session done in the gym. I had a client come in and we did a load of stuff. Really enjoyed it, had some fun. We're gonna tidy up the gym and then have some lunch, post some stuff on the socials and then onto the computer for some computer work. Bolly. Bolly of bollies. You okay? No, yeah, I don't want to get up either. Ah. Hello. Who's that? Who's that, Ollie? Daddy. Is it Dad, Dad? Yeah. Is Dad, Dad good on TV? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Are you going to like and subscribe? Say, nah. No, that's for Mummy. Dad. Yeah, watch Daddy's one. Oh, he's climbing on that. Oh, oh. Can you do cheese? <laughs> Say cheese. Yeah. Oh! So it's now Saturday. We're doing a mud run in Brentwood called Nuclear Races. So it's about half six in the morning. The decision is, do I wear these old trainers that have got holes in? My little toe's gonna pop out and get smashed. Or these, which are completely falling apart. But I've got better tread and the toes won't fall out. Or those. Definitely not those. I can't risk my toes falling out of that. So it might have to be these haggard old running shoes.
Morning. So we're just getting ready before we go for the mud run. Charlie's maybe go next year? Yeah. Okay, uh, so Georgie's getting her shoes on. She's worried that they're too loose and they're going to come off. My shoes are absolutely effed. I don't think they're going to last long, but I haven't got any others. I've got a bag ready. I'm going to take a go, bro, so you guys can see what's going on. Ollie's staying here. Uh, what else do we need to do? Vaseline. Need to do some Vaseline. Vaseline. Not, not going to tell you on camera. Bracing. And then a drink. I need a drink. Then, so we'll see you in a minute. And then, when we're all done, yeah. everything else, we get to do the slide. Yes, the death slide. He wants to do it next year. So we do it next year? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, we're, <clears throat> we're wearing Rescue Fit tops this year because I found some old ones. So we'll see if we can salvage them after. I'm doing vlogging. Dad, you have to say something. Uh, hi everyone, just put my shoes on. These are my Solomons that I got a long time ago and they've just started to rip. So I'm hoping that they will survive. He's pointing at them, yeah. Hopefully they'll survive the four hour mud run. They feel comfy and tight, but it's just the, the bottoms that I'm worried are gonna come off. There's a little bit of tread on the bottom, but yeah. better than my other trainers. See you, See you next time. This is an old GoPro. It's a 1080p GoPro. I've stuck a float on the back. The handle is a float, and then I've put two straps on the side connected by a carabiner to a sling so that I can run, jump, put it to the side of me. Uh, and if it gets broken or lost, it's just an old camera. So we'll see what the footage is like on that. Because I'm so terrible at getting ready, we're now a little bit late. Our wave time is 9.20, so I need to get a move on, get in the car and get going. Can you believe it? I left the house, forgot my ID. We need that to get in. So we're on our way to the nuclear races in Brentwood. We've done this, how many times have we done this? This is like three or fourth year. I was going to say this is the last year we'll do it because last year was so cold and it just felt so unenjoyable that we were like, oh, I don't think we'll do it again. But maybe we'll do it again. Not sure. With Charlie. With Charlie, maybe. With, the, with one of the boys. Uh, so we're a little bit late. I'm rubbish at getting ready. Forgot my ID. I was trying to get a load of stuff together. So I think we've got everything. It's nearly 10 past eight and our wave is 20 past nine. So hopefully we get there in time, get parked, get across the road, get booked in, do a little bit of filming before the event starts. Where's the sun? Where's the sun? Non-existent. Not here. The, e the brief yesterday, the Rescue Fit brief that's on every day live on YouTube and Instagram, said that there would be sun. What is uh, yeah, I think I said it was going to be sunny. Well, I think no, this is. Well, weather up to be cloudy. What, today's going to be cloudy? Or mist, whatever this one is. Yeah, cloudy, but warm. Alright, so yeah, I don't understand. I thought it was meant to be hot and sunny on the Saturday. This is, uh, it might not be as enjoyable as before. Alright, we've arrived. We need to park. What time is it? 20 past 8. That's good. So we've got about an hour before our wave starts. George is driving. He's gonna find, a, yeah, as usual. I don't like driving. Find a place to park in a field. Oh, is that them over there? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hello, morning. Yeah. Hello. Back off. Lovely. Thank Have you. Right. Where is the sun? Where is the warm weather? Where's that we the were? sky? Where's the sky? We can't see anything. Oh my god! I'm gonna get stuck in this field. All right. So we've parked and the grass is so wet, some of the cars are starting to slip as they're moving around. So hopefully by the time we get back later, it'll be dry enough to get out. Otherwise we'll be oh, stuck here. Wet yeah, wet. I've got an injury because I hit the door, car, the car door on my leg. Thank you. 
Perfect. All right, we've got here. So really excited to get this done. It's not as cold as I thought it was going to be, but it's still like misty, misty cold. So what I'll try and do is I'll talk you through the event and then I'll cut in between the GoPro footage. We're doing it with Georgie, James and Emma. They're going to be coming with us and it starts there. So that's where everyone kind of congregates, gets together, you do a warm up, which um, there you can just see Rob Jelly will be about there doing a warm up with us. And then we're off. Then we head out into the fields, into the, the ground that's here. And there's just loads of different individual obstacles. And in between that, you kind of run in between them. So I'll try and explain what happened either on a voiceover or after the event, I'll have a little chat about what happened. Right, see you in a sec. Who has done this before? You've got yourselves cleaned up nice. Who's doing a first OCR race right here, right now? Welcome to the family, everyone. Good to see some new fresh faces. Uh, bad news is, uh, this is contradictive, so you will be back. All right, a couple of other quick questions. Who's doing 7K? Hands up. Who's doing 12? What is wrong with you people? There was a shorter option. Oh, just go up and post. But just let it record? Yeah, just hold it up there and we'll, I'll edit it later. Thank you. That's a good idea. Just doing a quick test. So I've not used this GoPro on a, a mud race or a run for quite a long time. Hopefully I can just keep hold of it and not lose it. We'll see what kind of footage we get and I'll see you out there. At about quarter past nine, Rob, the host for the Nuclear Races event, called us over into the start area where we got warmed up and ready to go. We were actually starting to get a little bit chilly, so heading into this area to get warmed up was a good idea. Georgie wanted to go to the back so that no one could watch her warming up. I couldn't help heading over to say hello to Rob. Morning, Rob. At this point, you could feel the excitement and buzz start to warm everyone up. When the warm up started, everyone was really happy to get going, stretching, moving and get ready for the run. The final countdown began and everyone started moving towards the start line. And we're off. Everyone started running down the hill towards the first obstacle. Some of us were stuck trying to get through the gate. This didn't take long though, and as soon as we were through and we said bye to Rob, we went off down the hill. At this point, it dawned on us that there was no turning back now. The year of waiting for this event had arrived and it was time to get muddy. There was a bit of a bottleneck at the end of the hill. We weren't quite sure why. And then as the people started to head down over the top, we realized it was a big stinky river. And just like that, everyone was soaking wet up to their hips, covered in mud, covered in water, but ready for the next part of the race. It was guaranteed that one of us was gonna fall over first and it happened to be Georgie. I managed to get it all on film, which was great, but what was bad for George is that she landed in a pile of stinging nettles. Quick, someone look for a dock leaf to rub on her bum. From here on in, there were loads of different obstacles, things to pick up, things to move, things to climb over, things to climb under.
we're a couple of minutes in, feeling pretty good now because the sun is trying to pop through the clouds. Georgie and Emma are a little bit behind. So they'll catch up in a minute. James has gone on ahead a little bit. So yeah, enjoying it. Looking forward to the bigger obstacles. George thought it would be a great idea to find a bit of mud, put a hand in it and then slap it onto James's head. If you're not sure whether you think you can do a nuclear race, don't worry, all the obstacles are really great to climb over, there's handholds, and if you really can't do it, you can go round. I can't really remember when we first started doing nuclear races. It was definitely kind of three or four years ago. But ever since, it's just been something that we can look forward to. We usually book it a year before because it's a little bit cheaper. And then we've got the whole year to train, to look forward to it, and hope that it's going to be a nice sunny day. Two of us have booked the 12K. Two of us have booked the 7. So in the end, we all decided to do the 7 together. Although some of these obstacles look pretty straightforward, when you're wet, slippy, cold and been running for a while, they're actually a little bit difficult. Definitely the mud makes it more difficult. As you can see here, I started to slip and slide. When you come through this clearing here, you get your first look at the big lake. You can see the death slide there in the middle. But first it was time for the monkey bars. These kind of bend and go over. James went first. He managed to get all the way over and jump to the end. Then it was my turn. So we handed the camera over. He jumped into the lake to film me. I managed to get a little pose in the middle, jump off and then we're off we go again. Guaranteed a laugh on this obstacle and then through into the tunnels. Once we'd all come through that, it was time to climb up the slidey, slippy thing and then onto the climby, hangy thing. I didn't make it all the way across, I fell just at the end, but Georgina did really well and she got all the way through her section. Yeah, nice one. Then it was through the cargo net and onto this big pile of mud. This obstacle is known about, it's seen in loads of the pictures. It's basically a huge, big kind of pile, boggy, muddy thing. It's really difficult to get through because it's so thick. He's slowing down, I think he's slowing down. Mm, think of it maybe a KFC bucket waiting for you at the other end. Mm, Dude! Jesus Christ, I've got things to do! I've got all these other people to help, Brad! Come on! Jeez! Oh, honestly! Thanks, dude. You're very welcome. Made it. Thanks, mate. All right. At this point, I was absolutely knackered, really struggling to breathe, but I managed to get my breath back, head round, and watch the others. You could see the desperation in Georgie's face. She really wanted to get through. She did so well pushing through the mud. Once she reached the other side, I reached out my hand. I was covered in mud anyway. I grabbed hold of her and pulled her out to the other side. Although you get completely knackered, completely covered in mud, it's so worthwhile doing this event. Really enjoyed that bit. From here, we headed down the slippy, slidey bit into the big lake, washed ourselves off, and then headed onto the death slide. The death slide is one of the other really big obstacles here at the Nuclear Races event. It's definitely something to give a go, even if you're a little bit scared of the heights and the water, it's really fun to go.
so I was just doing a little bit of filming and I noticed there's some holes in Georgie's trousers so she wants me to take my top off to hide the holes which is pretty funny but she's a bit worried about them splitting now what's happened? I've got a hole where my bum is <laughs> Those space hoppers absolutely destroy your legs. Then it was onto this strange contraption where you can grab on and spin round it. After that, there was some more climby stuff. And actually there's obstacles all around the event. So there's not actually that much running in between each obstacle. These big metal poles are really slippery and slidey. They're really thin and they swivel around. So as you can see, Emma struggled to stay on top. Surprisingly enough, this is the obstacle that scares me the most. What you've got to do is you've got to put your hands out in front of you and then when you're ready, jump across. It's such an odd gap and there's just enough height to make it really scary. We've made it to the slip and slide. This is another really cool one. A really big, long slip and slide and you actually go really fast. I recognize this field from the last time and it's the last couple of obstacles. So you've got the vert ramp where you've got to run up to the top and then onto the travelator. We've come to the last bit, so the last obstacle is a uh, travelator type style. We've done the, the vert ramp, so the last one is the travelator. It's a great feeling when you finish a nuclear races because you know that you've made it all the way through, you've done all the obstacles, you've got muddy and wet and cold, and then it's on to the showers. All right, so we're done. We had an amazing time. We did the 7K, but it was loads of fun. We still did the death slide, the, uh, what's the other one called? The sliding drop one. Loads of mud, loads of fun. Everyone have a good time? Fed up and be filming yet? Yeah. <laughs> From the finished podium, we then head back out into the main arena part where we started and then we can get a lovely beer and some food. I opted for the biggest burger I could find, double stacker with bacon and onions. Ah, oh, yum, yum, yum. We were really lucky because the sun was out, we got some food and a beer and then we could chill out on the grass and have a chat. That is Nuclear Races Done 2024, Saturday, boom. 7K, we didn't do the 12K, did the 7K. But still really fun, got to do all the big obstacles, a bit of running, a bit of mud and stuff. So yeah, nice day. <laughs> what do you study? The next day Georgina had work and I had the boys, so we headed to the park with Nanny and Pops. Yeah. Shall I go in with you? Although we had nice sun for the local park to walk around in, I was quite tired from the day before and even the week, so I got quite stressed with the boys getting ready. 
It's Sunday. I am absolutely exhausted. <sighs> Georgie went to work this morning. So I had the boys. Charlie woke up about half six and then Ollie a bit after that. And it just takes me some days, just hours to feel like I'm actually awake. Georgie's mum and stepdad come round and we went to the park. It took a little while to kind of get ready. I got a bit stressed getting the boys ready, but it was nice and sunny. But yeah, sometimes I'm just, I'm just exhausted. I'm flat out done, like out, like exhausted, tired. And everything just comes a bit too much really. Which is a shame because there's nothing actually, there's nothing wrong. But I'm just so, I'm just, there's just too much going on. And I feel like because things aren't finished, they they are just here in the brain, taking up space. And until they're finished and ticked off and done, that takes up too much space and time in my brain. So it's not like anything drastic needs to happen in work and life and business and stuff. But until all of these things are done, there's just not any space up here to add other things or because there's too much up here, I can't concentrate on one thing very well. So something, they, I mean, they're just, just the projects and the stuff just needs to go away. And that needs to happen by, by like finishing or doing them and then moving on. So as a finisher for this vlog, really, hopefully next week or at some point, I can start ticking things off. Now the weather's better, now there's more time during the day. I hope that things can get done. And that's all I want really, is just for things to be done and get done so that I can then enjoy days off or enjoy business days or go to the other job and not feel completely overwhelmed by everything else. The more that I try and the more that I try and work on things, the more things that are like, oh right, I could do this or I could do that or I could build up and do this. But it just is just too much. So hopefully in the next vlog, the next week, I can get some jobs done. Maybe if I plan them on the days that I can, film them in the background and then you like have that as an idea of using that as content that that can push me to feel like they're getting done and hopefully you can see that the things are getting done and that i'm feeling better as more things get ticked off so we'll see anyway thanks for watching i hope you have a great evening and i'll see you either in the brief the rescue fit brief or on the next vlog